Hey guys, what's up? Uh, I wanted to jump on here and make a quick video. Wanted to kind of talk you through the steps that I take to get my hive uh, prepped and ready and stuff for overwintering. Uh, there's pretty much three key steps that I take. Uh, now it's October's here, leaves are coming off. Uh, the weather is going to be changing real soon, and I'll be changing over from one to one to two to one syrup for feeding. Need to get weight on these colonies out here. Uh, pretty much the the first thing that I will, it's probably the first and most important thing, is you need your bees to be healthy uh, for winter. So the key to that is mite treatments, check and treat. I use uh, Apigard and uh, OAV for pretty much all my treatments. Um, after that I'm gonna kind of based off the size of the population most of my hives are grown into double deeps. Uh, if I've got some bees lacking in the population maybe they haven't filled you know most of this box up i'm gonna pull this off you don't want to give the bees too much room that they can't maintain and then uh, i'll i'll put syrup on these bees in that lower box and i'll be feeding them if i have a, a big enough population for double deeps which is pretty much 99% of my hives right now, they're all strong, they're doing good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take any full frames of honey that's up top and I'm gonna rotate them down and I'm gonna move the empty frames up here. Then I'm gonna continue to feed. I wanna get as much food in this top box as I can possibly get. Uh, so once I've got that part done, which, Right now, I've already got all my feeder shims on. And whenever I'm using a migratory top, I'll go through and I'll put a piece of this uh, double bubble insulation on all my colonies that's got this migratory top. You know, you see everybody's using this stuff. It's, it's a good little barrier, you know, for the heat to hit and it'll help to hold that heat down in this colony. <clears throat> now, if I'm running the telescopic tops, which all of my colonies over on Black Ridge are all telescopic, I've got one or two that's down here. I'm gonna take my inner cover and I'll put a piece of mesh on there. And what that's gonna do which I've got a bunch of this R5 insulation. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna keep the bees from eating holes in this insulation and crawling up in here. So I've got that mesh on there. I've got this insulation. Then I just stick my regular telescopic top up there. Now, the main reason for this isn't really so much for a upper entrance because in the winter when I do get a, a heavy snow, I'll go through and I'll, I'll knock all the snow off to unblock the entrance. And speaking of that, I do keep uh, entrance reducers in. So most of my colonies, you've probably seen them sticking out like that. I, I do that just to, which I'm bad for losing things like this. So I just pull them out during the nectar flow and then when the bees, like right now, the bees are starting to try to sniff around and do a little robbing. So I'll just go ahead and, and I'll push, you know, that, that entrance reducer in there. And I mean, the way that hive sits, if this colony is strong, healthy bees, that will survive winter, no problem here in Kentucky. Uh, once I've got that stuff set up, you know, I've, I've got my mite treatments done. I've got my uh, 
I've rearranged how I want it. I've got food in there and that's really all that I have to do to prepare for winter. I mean the bees they once you get them in this state the bees will take care of themselves all throughout the winter but I will I can tell you I will go through usually once every three weeks or once once a month and uh, I'll go through and I'll add a sugar brick up here on top now last year <clears throat> whenever I was putting bricks in I've got a snake camera that I can plug into my phone and I stick down in here, I run it up through the entrance and I kind of do a winter inspection, which is basically just to see uh, where the cluster's at, you know, how high up they've gone, if they've shifted from side to side. And I can see through that little snake camera how much food that they've got. But last year, I had several colonies that were bypassing this top box and coming up here and eating those sugar bricks. And I just thought, you know, what in the world are they doing that for? And after thinking about it for a bit, I was kind of happy that they were doing that because sugar bricks, they're, they're a piece of cake to make. You're not really disturbing the colony that much by sticking them in there. But whenever it came to the spring, I had probably, I don't know, 15 or 20 colonies that still had completely full deeps up top of honey. And in the spring, they started consuming that honey up there. So with them having that sugar brick up here, they didn't burn through all their honey stores during the winter, they ate that sugar. And I've, I've read and I kind of believe that the solid brick of sugar is probably better on their gut and their health in the winter. I mean, they're not, they're not out, you know, doing bee things all through the winter. They're in here and they're just trying to keep what little bit of brood they've got warm. They're keeping the queen safe, but they're burning energy as they do that and they can't get out and take uh, cleansing flights. Well, there's a lot less uh, junk in just that pure cane sugar than there is in the honey. So they don't really have to take, uh, take cleansing flights as often as they would with honey. So if you have a long stretch of real bad frigid weather, uh, it's not as hard as though on those bees to be able to just take that sugar in and you know they're not having to take them flights so I think that that kind of helped my colonies out a lot uh, overwintering in, in Kentucky using using this uh, little technique I've never lost a hive I'm, I'm going into my fifth year of keeping bees and uh, I've not once lost a hive in the winter. The only time I've ever lost one was because I missed a colony and I failed to feed them. And you can jump back and see that video. That was kind of a, a wake up moment for me that really got under my, my skin and upset me that I let those bees starve to death. Which, I mean, you're going to, people going to take losses, you know, anything can happen. Uh, really, the only other thing that I've had happen besides that was, um, you know, a colony just go queenless. And who knows what in the world caused, caused that in that particular colony. But, you know, you don't, you're not going to catch that until... A few weeks later and a few weeks later when you start noticing that like half your bees are gone they're not really gone they're just laying out there dead because they their lifespan has come to an end and you don't have a, a queen in here laying so that's when you know if you don't inspect regularly deep down inspections 
you're not going to know if that queen is dead or alive or if you've got one so you know pretty much this is just how i go about getting my stuff prepped for winter uh like i said this as i say in game of thrones winter is coming it's going to be here before you know it it's going to be time to switch over from one to one to two to one syrup and then i'll feed that until i just can't feed no more and then i'll start making hard sugar bricks to put in this upper shin and uh i'll just let them sail through winter that's that's pretty much all i do here but i just thought i'd jump on here and, and kind of explain to you guys how i go about getting my bees through winter maybe you can use that info and apply that to your operation but thanks for taking the time to swing by check the video out i appreciate you guys uh till next time take it easy have a good one thanks for watching